compelling you here at Extreme Couture, being joined by the one and only, the Motown phenom, Mr. Kevin Lee. Always great to see you. I feel like uh, I saw you were on vacation, right, in Jamaica? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a uh, last bit of vacation before yeah. I get started with the work. Yeah, now I know you're fighting Sean Brady mm -hmm. in that welterweight division at UFC 264 before. I get more into that, though. Basically, your last fight, March 2020, was against Charles Oliveira. He just became the lightweight champion. What did you make of his fight? Uh, he had a good fight. I mean, I knew after I had fought him that night that Charles was the best in the division, yeah. for sure. Um, so he, he, he saw that all the way through, and he showed a lot by, like, getting dropped and then coming back right away. Uh, in that fight, I felt like I underestimated him, too, a little bit. Yeah. Because I saw some of his past fights, he would get dropped and kind of look for a way out. And uh, he stopped doing that. So by him winning that title, I'm actually taking it as a little bit of a motivation, you know. Now, you said you feel when you fought him that he was the best in the division. Do you think that he'll hold on to the title for quite some time? Yeah, for the, for the foreseeable future. Uh, at lightweight, I don't see anybody else beating him right now. Not even, like, for example, the Dustin Poirier, he's about to fight Connor in that trilogy. I mean, first off, how do you see that trilogy playing out? Mm, I don't know. I see Connor maybe maybe winning this one. I think he'll make the adjustments and winning. Uh, but regardless, either one of them, I don't think have the complete game to beat somebody like Charles. Uh, with Charles, you got to be on your P's and Q's the whole time, and you got to have the skills behind it. I think Dustin's had a lot of fights, and uh, he's kind of coming to his own. But I think he's starting to hit a, a, a plateau period where he, he kind of does what he does, but there's no new wrinkles added to his game. You got to hit Charles with something new. Well, there's so much going on in that lightweight division. I guess right now your former division, right, going into this fight. For example, Justin Gaethje and then now Benil Dariush. I believe he's ranked number three. Michael Chandler. Like, what do you make of the landscape of that lightweight division? Yeah, I mean, lightweight has always been the most stacked division. Yeah. Um, and there's just a lot of really tough guys. Like, everybody does – everybody's at the top of their game, for sure. Um, and I kind of stuck around for maybe a little too long, and, and uh, I've always felt like that's my division. But seeing the way things was going and, and all these guys coming up from 45 and smaller guys, Chandler, uh, Oliveira, uh, you know, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, all those used to be 45-pounders. So um, – I thought it was time for me to move up and, and let those guys run that division. Well, you last fought at welterweight against RDA. So is it safe to say that moving forward, you'll fight at 170 more often, like for the rest of your career? Or is this kind of a temporary thing? No, it's, it's, it's this will be my new division um, is 170. When I fought RDA at it a couple years back, I kind of just was testing the waters. And and even before the fight, I didn't really make a decision to, to move up. I kind of just wanted to take the fight, see how it was going to be. And right after, actually, like during the fight, I knew I wanted to move back down. But now uh, I'm, I'm set that this is my division. Well, how much do you walk around at right now compared to when you fought at 155? I'm still about the same weight. I'm still about 190. Okay. Um, I was 190 getting ready for these fights. Um, if something crazy was to happen and, and I had to move back down, I, I would do it. I could still be able to. And this would be the same size I would be going into a lightweight fight. Well, I saw that you were calling out Mike Perry before Sean Brady and you got announced. Can you kind of clarify to the fans what really went down with that? Yeah, I mean, I'll keep it real. I, I wanted to, uh, I'm coming off of two knee surgeries mm -hmm. after that Oliveira fight, two major ACL surgeries. Mm -hmm. um, so it ain't just like I tore my meniscus or something like that. I had to relearn how to walk and how to be an athlete again. So coming back, I wanted an easy fight. And uh, not to say Mike Perry's an easy fight. He going to show up and he going to be tough and he going to uh, stand there and let me punch him a lot. So I thought that would have been fun, but... He didn't want the fight, so I moved on. And uh, this this test is a whole lot better and a whole lot tougher, for sure. Well, were you ever offered that Mike Perry fight? Like, was it in writing or no, just no, verbal? Not not formally. Uh, I just was kind of chipping at him, you know, and, and I told the UFC what I was interested in. They reached out to him, too, and he just didn't want the fight. He had his own reasons, so I don't, I'm not a bully. I ain't going to keep picking at a man that don't want to fight. I, I tried – two or three times he ain't wanted and he and he literally said I don't want to fight so I get it not a lot of people want to fight me 
So how did Sean Brady come about? Because I think I saw him tweet at you. So was that kind of how this started? Or was he someone that was also on your radar? Um, I think it was something that the UFC wanted. Okay. Um, I think it made sense. You know, we, we're the same age, uh, pretty much the same size. He might have a few pounds, and he's fought it at 170 before. Um, but we just, we just, we're very similar. So I think, I think the UFC likes those type of matchups. And when I look at it, it makes sense. I mean, he's undefeated uh, from Philly. He's going to put on a good fight. So it makes sense. Well, what are your expectations for yourself, though, going into this fight against him? Yeah, so it's a much harder fight than what I was looking for. I ain't going to lie. So I kind of had to turn myself up a little bit as soon as uh, they gave me that call. They called me my last day in Jamaica. Uh, I'm, I'm on vacation, and I'm like, all right. I booked the flight the yeah. next morning, uh, went for a run that night, booked the flight, yeah. and uh, now it's back to work. This is a this is a way tougher fight, so I got to turn up. And what about the landscape of the welterweight division? I mean, you have Kamaru Usman, then you also have Colby Covington, Stephen Thompson versus Gilbert Burns, I believe. They're fighting on your card as well. I mean, what do you make of just this whole landscape and then Nate Diaz he's about to fight Leon Edwards mm -hmm. yeah I mean that that's one of my main reasons for going up uh is that welterweight is starting to really pick up and um with Khabib retiring yeah. uh Kamaru Usman is the new number one pound for pound fighter right now so that gives me somebody to shoot for and and you know me I, I love a big challenge so once I saw that and I saw his last performance against Jorge that's when I made up my mind I'm going up well, you mentioned Habib, and it's been quite some time since you and I last caught up. What do you make of his, I guess, official retirement just a few months ago? I, I, I was sad to see him go. I ain't going to lie. I, I, I was sad to see him go, but uh, I think he'll be back. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's an unofficial retirement in my eyes. For a couple years, he'll probably be gone. But, uh, yeah, I was I was sad to see that for sure. Well, who do you think he'll return against or return for? Oh no, it had to be a it had to be a big fight. It had to be a it's gonna have to be a really big fight. So uh, I don't know, but for now, I I got a new goal in mind. I got a new target, and uh, I'm gonna bring out the best me for sure. Absolutely, and we are here at Extreme Couture. I know you've kind of went to TriStar for some of your camps and along with coach Dewey Cooper but is it safe to say you'll be back here at Extreme Couture like full-time and at the PI and with coach Dewey as well yeah I, I've been here uh you know this is my this is really my home yeah. um I still love Faraza Hobby I'm still going to use him um I'm on and off the phone with him you know he's giving me as much advice but you know with the pandemic and everything going on and especially me coming off these knee surgeries it makes sense to stay near uh, the PI, continue my physical therapy, and uh, yeah, make make it the best that I can. And, and Extreme Couture is the, I mean, this number one gym in the world right now. And are you 100% like your knees, you're fully healed now? Yeah, yeah, I'm 100, yeah. And lastly, like I said, I follow you on Twitter. I saw that you seemed a bit annoyed. You said you got to start doing something because everyone keeps saying the same two quotes or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, I got to come back on the internet. I know, I know. I was going to do a lot more if they would have gave me the Mike Perry fight. I wouldn't have had to train as hard. But uh, for this one, I kind of, I got to be more physical than anything. I got to show people. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show them. In reference to those, like, two quotes or what you're annoyed of the fans saying, is it, like, the holes in your game? Like, is it yeah, that yeah. stuff? Or? Yeah, it's it's not annoying. You know, it's the holes thing. And then, uh, what's the other one? Where where do I fit or whatever? Um it's not that annoying, but I just, I'm somebody, I like some new shit, you know what I mean? I like to keep the ball rolling, and I've already had, like, a lot of iconic moments, I feel like, in my career, and uh, I'm ready for the next one I'm over these last two. Well, do you have a new catchphrase in mind? No, it wasn't, those weren't catchphrases, <laughs> no way, I didn't even make that shit up. I don't know where this shit came from, to be honest with you. And lastly, for all your fans who can't wait to watch your return, what would you like to let them know? Just get ready on July 10th. I'm going to take over that card. I mean, it's a huge card. Uh, McGregor is coming back against Poirier. First fight back with fans in the, in the arena. I was the first fight during this whole COVID yeah, thing. That's true. Um, so I'm the first fight back officially, I think. You know, yeah, they had those little cards in Florida and Texas, but this is Vegas. So, um, 
And yeah, I'm ready to to open back up the world. It's gonna be fun.